Welcome to River City Church Online. So glad to have you join us today on Easter weekend 2021. And I just wonder how you are experiencing God this weekend. Now I'm at the retreat center that I talked about on Good Friday and I'm at the labyrinth which is a maze that you kind of walk through and you get to that center rock over there where you can sit down and pray and so forth. And sometimes going through life it feels like you're in quite a puzzle trying to figure out how you're going to get through certain things in your life and maybe today you're going to decide that getting through things in your life could involve Jesus and so today I hope that wherever you are at whether you are seeking to know Jesus or you've been experiencing God for some time in your life and know Jesus quite well that you will have a fresh experience at the cross today. And if this happens to be one of those days that you decide to take one of those initial steps, maybe for the first time, you're gonna say, you know, I wanna follow Jesus and I want to get baptized or maybe get into a small group or those kind of things. I would like to encourage you to contact us on our website or put a message down in the chat line below on Facebook or on YouTube this morning and one of our guest services representatives will be there to answer your questions or help you out. Either way, let's experience God together the best way that we can while we're staying apart and being at home. We've had a lot of activity over this past weekend. We had the Last Supper communion on Thursday night. I'm going to have some highlights from that at the end of today's service, so don't run away after the message. I also want to remind you about some events coming up in April so that uh, we can hang out together even though we're going into another stage of lockdown in our province we can still be a community and we can still be there to support one another the question is will you join us so hang on for the announcements and find out how you can be a part of a supportive community at River City Church okay let's head into our service this morning I'm so glad you're here and I know you're in for something special. Talk to you soon. Let me tell you a story. You may not believe me. I barely believe it myself. But I can't dispute what my soul knows. Peter! John! It's all true. Come see this! Everything he said. The tomb! Every impossible detail. It's empty! It's all true. <laughs> been found what has been defeated what has been forgiven what was once dead has new life What was once old has been made new. 
what was once finite has been made eternal. May we remember and follow the risen way. How great the chasm that lay between us How high the mountain I could not climb In desperation I turned to heaven And spoke your name into the night Then through the darkness your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul the work is finished the end is written jesus christ my living hope who could imagine 
imagine so great a mercy what heart could fathom such boundless grace the god of ages step down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame the cross i buried body began to breathe out of the silence the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me then came the morning that sealed the promise your buried Hey, good morning, River City. You might be wondering where I am or even what I'm doing. I'm at the Creef Retreat Center uh, in the village of Creef, about 12 kilometers northeast of Cambridge. This is a, a site that I've come to for spiritual retreats for decades now, uh, both solo retreats and retreats with fellow pastors. 
And I don't know about you, but I have never been to an Easter sunrise service. Uh, and I figure it's for two reasons. First of all, in Canada, late March, early April, before the sun comes up, it is still pretty cold. Uh, a normal temperature for this time of year would be plus one at this time. I picked a particularly cold morning to be here. It is minus six right now. And in just a moment, the sun is gonna be coming up over that hill behind me. On a normal Easter, I'd also be too excited uh, to leave the house before the church service because the way that most kids are on Christmas morning, well, that's how this kid is on Easter morning. It is my absolute, absolute favorite Sunday of the year. And uh, I'm like a, a, a kid and I just, I can hardly sleep the night before. And I'm just like too excited to leave the house until it's time for church. So on a normal Easter morning, I would be at home and I'd be preparing to deliver what I consider the most important, most in incredible message in human history. But it is not a normal Easter, not by any stretch of the imagination. Um, we've now been in pandemic for 55 weeks, so almost a month longer than a year. And of that 55 weeks, uh, we had two lockdowns. The first one was lasted seven weeks. The second one in our region, at least, also lasted second, seven weeks and now we're in lockdown number three. But of those 55 weeks, only 14 have been lockdown weeks, which means that 41 have been normal pandemic time. And now that we're in lockdown three, we're again facing extra stringent restrictions. Uh, it is uh, an, an important and critical situation right now. And uh, I don't think any of us are looking forward to going into yet another lockdown. It's like, ugh, you know, more restrictions. Now, thankfully, at least some people are trying to maintain a sense of humor. I, I received this picture on the internet. It's going to come up on your screen. I get locked down, but I get up again. And I think that's what we're going to do, right? We're, we're into lockdown, but we're going to get up again. And it's hard to look at the bright side during these dark days. What I'm hearing and maybe what you're hearing and what I'm feeling and maybe what you're feeling is this. I just want to break free. I want to break free. In fact, if there's any sentiment that captures the prevailing mood today, I think that's it. We want to break free. I mean, no haircuts, no hugs, no holidays for over a year now. Restaurants and shops closed, not once, not twice, but now three times. No cheering fans in the stands. In fact, no fans in the stands at all. The Blue Jays ran, just finished their cardboard cutout campaign. I don't know if you heard about this, but uh, we Canadians uh, were able to nominate our most famous Canadians for cardboard cutouts to be put in the, in the stands for their home games. Everything is just so different right now and probably three phrases have been heard more frequently than any others during this pandemic stay at home masks on two meter rule now the lockdown and the restrictions and all the different safety measures have been put in place for a reason and they remain to protect us because death just will not relent. It just will not give up its assault on us all through this miserable virus. Death is the reason why we haven't been able to see our friends or our family for so long. It's death that's the problem. That's what it is. So here then is the issue, you see. When all this is over and they say you are free, when we rip off our masks and we hug once again, when we dance and we sing and we gather with friends, I can't wait, but hold on. Because restrictions or not, death hasn't gone. Virus or not, death still wins the day, which means, well, it kind of dampens our hip hip hooray because death hasn't gone, unless 
there was a way that we could be free from even the grip of death's tyranny. But how, you may ask, you can't beat the Grim Reaper. But that is the message, the wonderful message of Easter. The Son of God came to earth. The Word became flesh, as was always God's plan, to swap places with us so that we could begin to live the life we were made for, a life free from shame. At the cross, Jesus took upon himself our blame, the perfect one coming to this earth to die in our place so that if we trust him, we are given God's grace. But the Easter message doesn't end there. Jesus died. He was buried. But no one could prepare, no one, for what happened next. And that's this. He rose again from the dead. Meaning that death no longer has to fill us with dread. Because on that Easter morning, Jesus broke free. Jesus broke free. He rose from the grave so that if you believe that Jesus died in your place and then rose, then listen to this, because here's how it goes. You too no longer need fear death. You don't need to fear death. Whenever it is that you take your last breath, because Jesus has beaten it, and here's your guarantee. Come to Jesus this Easter believe and be free. Here's how the Christian apostle Paul puts it in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I'm going to read verses 1 through 11, and this is from the NLT. Instruction on resurrection. Let me now remind you, dear brothers and sisters, of the good news that I preached to you before. You welcomed it then, and you still stand firm in it. It is this good news that saves you if you continue to believe the message I told you. Unless, of course, you had believed something that was never true in the first place. I passed on to you what is most important and what also had been passed on to me. Christ died for our sins, just as the scriptures said. He was buried and he was raised from the dead on the third day, just as the scriptures said. He was seen by Peter and then by the twelve, the twelve disciples. After that, he was seen by more than 500 of his followers at one time, most of whom are still alive, but some have died. Then he was seen by James and later by all the apostles. And last of all, as though I had been born at the wrong time, I also saw him, says Paul. For I am the least of all the apostles. In fact, I'm not even worthy to be called an apostle after the way I persecuted God's church. But whatever I am now, it is because God poured out his special favor on me. It's because God poured out his grace on me. And not without results. For I've worked harder than any of the other apostles, yet it was not I but God who was working through me by his grace. So it makes no difference whether I preach or they preach, for we all preach the same message you have already believed. And there he says, of most importance is this threefold message that Christ died, Christ was buried, and Christ rose again from the dead. He died, he was buried, he rose again from the dead. And multiple witnesses testify to this fact, right? He includes a list of those witnesses. And multiple witnesses testify this fact over a period of multiple days, some 40 days, so nearly six weeks. Listen to how Oxford professor John C. Lennox uh, puts it in his book entitled, can science explain everything?
Perhaps the most astonishing thing about the resurrection of Jesus Christ in Christian thinking is that from the very start, the leaders of the Christian community stake the whole validity of the gospel message upon it. The Apostle Paul wrote, and this is from the same chapter that I just read from just a little bit later, And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. And we are of all people most to be pitied. In other words, disprove the resurrection and the whole of Christianity would disappear in a puff of smoke. Unlike most other religions and worldviews which are based on ideas or theories, Christianity claims to be falsifiable based on this single historical claim. Disprove the resurrection of Jesus and Christianity is dead. Well, as most of you know, critics have been desperately trying to disprove the resurrection of Jesus for 2,000 years now and have failed because ultimately the evidence is too overwhelming. The evidence is simply too strong. Think of all the people and the groups and the organizations that have tried to disprove the resurrection of Jesus Christ and have failed over a 2,000 year period of time. And over that same 2,000 period of time, think of all the new people that have come to faith in Jesus. People of every continent and country, people of every nationality and ethnicity, thousands and tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands and millions and multiple millions. A recent study by McKinsey found that the average lifespan of major companies today, listed in Standard and Poor's 500, was 61 years, and that was in 1958. But today, the average lifespan of these very companies is 18 years or less. 18 years, that's it. Which means most of us will live longer than most major com- companies. Now, that's not to say that some companies haven't been around for a long time. The sixth oldest company in the world and the first outside of Japan is Stiff Skeller St. Peter Restaurant in Salzburg, Austria. Uh, This restaurant was founded in 803 AD, 803 AD, over 1200 years ago. And it was founded within the monastery of St. Peter's Arch Abbey. Now, this restaurant claims to have served some famous persons over the years, including Faust and Christopher Columbus and uh, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. And yet, as old as that company is, for nearly twice as long as that restaurant has been around, critics have been trying to discredit the resurrection of Jesus and have failed. The Greek word for skeptic, skeptain, derives from skeptain, which means to check out from a distance, to check out from a distance. So in its original use, a skeptic wasn't necessarily a doubter. A skeptic was someone who reserved judgment in order to investigate further. So in or- originally, a-, a skeptic was kind of like today's equivalent of a seeker or someone who's intellectually or spiritually curious. It's important to check things out from a distance to avoid being deceived. Ultimately, my wife Barb and I, and Greg and Tina Bowering too, we planted River City Church in Cambridge as a place for spiritual seekers, as a place for the intellectually and spiritually curious to come and to ask their tough questions of life and of the Christian faith. At least half of the sermon series that we've uh, had over the past 18 years have been targeted on the very questions that skeptics and seekers and spiritually curious people would ask. And maybe you're part of River City today, or maybe you're tuning into this broadcast this morning because you're one of them. You're a seeker. You're spiritually curious, but you're still skeptical. Well, there comes a point after we've investigated from a distance 
There comes a point after we've checked things out as much as possible when we have to give up the distance in order to make progress. By way of example, you'll never get to know me or anyone else for that matter if you remain at a distance. If you want to get to know me, you have to take that first step of giving up the distance and engaging me in a conversation. You can't even know what a relationship is without engagement. Well, it's the same with God. We can and must check things out from a distance, but that's just the first step. In order to gain the final evidence of the truth of Christianity, we have to give up that distance and we need to step out into the great unknown or maybe more accurately, the mostly unknown. See, only in taking that second critical step will you close the gap and experience a relationship with your Creator God through His Son, Jesus Christ. You've got to take that next step of repenting and of trusting, believing in God's Son, Jesus, in order to see the fullness of what it is that God has in store for you. I took that step formally 35 years ago, and I've been proving Christ's promises true in every area of my life ever since, in my personal life, in my married life, in my family life, in my professional life, in my life in the broader community of Cambridge and beyond, but even to an extent globally through the pilgrimage I did on the Camino de Santiago, de Compostela, and via my coast-to-coast bike ride in uh, raising funds for kids' cancer research. I've proved Christ's promises true in every part of my life, but my experience won't do for you. You can and must experience this transformation, this new life, for yourself. And to fail to get to know Christ, well, that's to miss out on life's ultimate purpose and life's ultimate joys, which is what Easter 2021 will be about for men, for many. But it need not be that way for you. Commit or recommit yourself to God today. Commit or recommit yourself to God today. In a moment, I'm going to lead you in a prayer that will help you to do that. And so if that's what you want to do today, Easter 2021, if you want to be able to face the grim reaper and death, and if you want to experience the fullness of joy and all that God has in store for you, then would you bow your head and would you pray this prayer from your heart? Dear God, I know I'm a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe Jesus Christ is your son. I believe that he died for my sin and that you raised him to life. And now I want to trust him or trust him again as my savior and follow him as my Lord from this day forward. Guide my life and help me to do your will. I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, if you made that decision today, that is good news. And it is not something to keep to yourself. It's something to celebrate and it's something worth sharing. So I would invite you to send me an email. My email will come up on the screen there. It's simply Daryl, D-A-R-R-E-L-L, at rivercitychurch.org. Send me an email today so that I can celebrate with you and so that we can talk about next steps in the faith. Happy Easter, River City. Happy Easter, everyone. May God bless you today and in the coming year. In Jesus, amen. I was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight 
It was my tomb Till I met you I was breathing but not alive All my failures I tried to hide It was my tomb Till I met you You called my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day You called my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into my soul Now your freedom is all that I know The old made new Jesus when I met you When you called my was heavy the chains break at the weight of your glory i needed shelter i was an orphan now you call me a citizen of heaven when i was broken you are my healing now your love is the air that i'm breathing i have a future my eyes are open because when you call my But on the first night of the Passover celebration, Jewish families retell the story of the Exodus from Egypt. And they do this through something called the Sedar Supper. So as we approach this meal tonight, we approach it with respect for the Jewish faith as well. So let me show the layout here. I'm just gonna turn my camera so you can all see it. Someone was gracious enough to provide me with an actual Sedar plate. So I'll see if I can get that on here. Can you see that? Yeah. Why are we eating a 
unleavened bread and matzah tonight? Thank you, Eliana. That's a good question. We eat the matzah to remind us of the fact that the Israelites did not have time to wait for yeast to rise in the bread because they had to be ready to move when God said so. It means that Jesus planned his own sacrifice. It means that Jesus intentionally planted the tree from which his cross would be carved. That lamb is amazing. When you mix the, the Yeah, Charlotte, when I went to pick the lamb up from your house, it smelled so good in your house. Oh my goodness. Do you want to share Thank you. Awesome. Thank you for doing all that. That he thinks I'm his Opa? <laughs> I think so, yeah. That's okay. That's Pastor Daryl. That's not Opa. <laughs> so, yeah, the Whitmans are signing off. So, I want to wish you guys all a happy Easter and enjoy this weekend with your family, lockdown style, of course. Oh, Good night, Narima. Bye, guys. Bye, everyone. Happy Easter. Good night. Happy Easter. Happy Bye. Easter. Good to see you, Pat. Good night, John. Good night, Cassie. Bye. Thank you, Daryl. That, Daryl, that was awesome. Thank you. Great Thank idea. You. Really good. Yes. Yeah. Thanks. Well, because of that Last Supper event, my faith in Jesus has been, um, I would say it has grown. I've grown more appreciation for what happened in the events of the cross and the freedom that I have. And maybe for you, there's been something that has changed as well. Maybe it's something from the Last Supper. Maybe it was the Good Friday service. Maybe it's something that was said this morning. And so again, if you have taken steps in your faith with Jesus, maybe you're deciding you want to follow him, then we want to encourage you to contact us on our website. You can go there and uh, it's just on the main page where you can find that little contact us button. Send us a message so that I can connect you with Daryl or with our discipleship director, Juliet, and help you take more steps of freedom in Christ and feel the complete forgiveness of your sins. Okay, so um, yeah, we're heading into another lockdown. Ooh, but you know what, River City, we've been doing this for a while and we know how to stay together while being apart. And one of those things that you can do is to jump on to our Zoom connection nights coming up for April 11 and April 16. And so women on next Sunday in the evening at 7 p.m., we're going to have a Hawaiian night together and you can put on your lay and grass skirt if you've got it and come on and join us for a Hawaiian Zoom adventure and bring some food and participate from home. Make it fun. It's what we make it right now, friends. And also guys, you can join in on a Wings and Things night Friday, uh, April 16 at 7 p.m. Again, there'll be a Zoom link for that. To sign up for either of those events, please go on our webpage zoom down and click on those events and just sign up that will enable us to know who's coming and we'll wait for you on zoom we will watch for you and just like a family does for each other um, also it, the links for those events will come out in ease news if you forget so watch for those at the end of the week i send e-news out on fridays okay that's about it for now and I don't know about you, but it's been such an action-packed weekend with all this Easter stuff. I need to go eat some chocolate. Yeah. Okay, I'll see you next week in seven days. And just bye for now. <laughs>